G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. We're in Lake Wendaree in the heart of Ballarat. It's a stunning location and uh, the lake's probably, I think, one of the best in Victoria. Full of weed beds and that to a trout spells plenty of food. We've got mud eyes, damsels, a lot of nymphs and we've put on a, uh, a sinking line here to fish in the, uh, the boat lanes here and we've got a lovely brown that's taken it pretty early in our day. We'll just get him in the net. Once I turn him around this way, come on mate. Oh, and that's a terrific start. Uh, we're in April and uh, we're uh, about 11 o'clock. So um, good gentleman hours to be up here, a little bit of sun and we're fishing the deeper water. Um, trout, I guess, they don't have sunglasses or eyelids, so they like either the deeper water or a little bit of structure with a little bit of weed and things like that. So we're fishing this, the rowing lanes, which gets uh, mowed uh, to clear out a lot of this weed. And it's a great place to spend a bit of time uh, putting a, a, a few flies into the deeper water and you can come up with a fish like this. I'll bring him out and give you a closer look. All right, just get him out, lovely conditioned fish. These, uh, oh, you look at the belly on that. For trout, it just means there's a lot of good tucker around this area. Just a beautiful fish. We'll get that hook out and get him back in the water. Great little tool, the catch and release, gets that fly out very easily. And that's a, uh, a variation of a magoo, which looks like a little damselfly, which uh, is the, the nymphal stage of uh, like a damsel, your blues and your brown damsels, a little bit like a dragonfly, and it works really well on these lakes here throughout uh, the Ballarat region. And if you just have a look at that, the depth on that, I mean, he's easily, he's probably three and a half, quarter to four, and that's an outstanding fish anywhere in Victoria, uh, but particularly in a lake that you've got, you know, like a, oh, a few hundred thousand people um, walking, walking around everywhere. She's pretty amazing actually, so uh, it's a lovely drive up. You're probably an hour and a half out of Melbourne, so it's not too far at all to get up for literally a few hours and you have some outstanding fishing up here. And, and that's what I think it's about to, to make the effort to get out to a, a place like this, spend a bit of time and you can come up with fish like that. It just makes it all worthwhile. Now it just pays, if you're gonna release your fish, you spend a bit of time with them. Um, and when we've caught him, he's, he's used a bit of energy, we've taken him out of the water. We just need him to re-oxygenate himself underwater. So spend a bit of time, just don't throw them back over. We've uh, just drifted with the current there and it allows water to flow through his gills. He gets uh, re-oxygenated, a little bit more energy, and then he can swim off. So spend that time with that fish to make sure he's um, gonna stay upright and uh, he'll swim away and be happy, ready for somebody else to catch. So uh, you could certainly eat them out of here. I'm sure the, the water's um, in pretty good uh, nick, 
but I prefer to put them all back. So uh, the choice is yours, but uh, if you're going to put them back, make sure you look after them first. underneath it oh we followed it I could just see one there was a rise there and sometimes it's hard to tell in amongst all these birds and you just watch that disturbance and wait for a bird to pop up and then be a bit disappointed but a bird didn't pop up and uh, it came up again and you go oh well it's probably a fish and sure enough he's followed that fly so he's interested but he wasn't aggressive enough to hit it so um, a bit disappointing a little bit of excitement for me anyway because I could see it with a good set of uh, Polaroid glasses, but um, it just pays as you're, you're drifting along. Just look for things that are going to um, let you know that there's a fish around and put your cast around that area. And hopefully, you're going to put it in front of one that's going to take it. You need a selection of flies to be successful on Lake Wendouree. This is around about what we would use for most of the time. We use a lot of these Magoo type patterns in variations of greens, blacks and browns. A few woolly buggers, a couple of um, ones with a little bit of silver to imitate like a little minnow. Uh, and then some mud eye patterns as well at various times. These are the, the damsel, um, nymphal stage of a damsel and that's what they look like. Um, which a lot of these Magoos imitate as well as well as variations of, of um, little nymphs and uh, midge pupae and things like that, as well as some dries. You get some amazing hatches here of duns, uh, particularly as the season draws to a close. They're incredible dun hatches, which uh, are probably the best in Victoria, so well worth having those on hand when you need them. Um, we've been successful today with the Magoo style, and I've just tied on a different one now with a, um, a little hot bead on it. So it's going to be, um, it'll stand out, particularly over these weedy um, uh, beds here. And uh, we hope the fish are going to think that's pretty cool too. So have a selection of flies are going to work, and just change them periodically until you get one that works. A couple of mistakes that we make when we're, we're learning to, to cast is too big a loops, and that is generally by using too much wrist and moving that fly rod in really big arcs. So we don't really want it like that. 10 and 2 is an ideal situation where we're going to go back, forward, and you're working in quite small little arcs. Gets a nice tight little loop and allows to, all that power to go into the line and throw that fly where it needs to be. So. Uh, if you are finding you're not getting any distance or it's landing in a bit of a pile at the end, it's because you're moving your rod too far. So tighten up those loops and you're going to be able to cast a lot further, a lot faster, a lot easier. So the benefit of this, it has a little, uh, where we tuck the bottom of the reel in, of, of the, the reel and the rod. And so what that allows, I can't get too wristy because it sort of locks it in place. So it just teaches you to use just that action there, that I can't go too far back and I can't go too far forward. Because that line is going to go wherever I stop that rod tip. So if I stop it right up here, the line's going to go straight up in the air. If I come too far down, it's going to splash down as well. So we need to be angling at an area about on the horizon and that allows that line to straighten out, lose all its energy and flutter down perfectly as you would imagine like a little bug would. So we just need to do that without using too much wrist there. So a casting aid like this will certainly help you just while we're learning as well. Now the Alpine Trout Farm is an iconic place particularly for our fly fishing beginner courses but it's also very well known 
for your catch and keep fishing in these ponds. There's some wonderful tasting trout that you can catch here and your kids are going to love it as well. So if you've got a bit of time, pop down to the Alpine Trout Farm at Nuji, you're going to love it. Today we're up in uh, the high country in Gippsland. There's quite a few tiny little rivers around here that are uh, full of browns and rainbow trout. It's a great place to spend a little bit of time in certainly one of the best places in the world. Pretty important when you get to a spot like this, which has a few people, particularly on weekends, that you want to let people know where you're fishing. So what we have, if we're fishing downstream, we put this on the, uh, the front of our car to let people know where we've gone fishing, either downstream, turn it over, or upstream. They're a handy little thing to let everybody know where you're fishing so that we can all fit in and have a wonderful day. Now when you're fishing these small rivers, it's quite important that you have the right gear. I mean, a lot of these uh, small little twig waters you can jump across without getting your feet wet. I tend to use the Stalker Glide in a seven foot six two weight. It's ideal for this sort of situation because the presentation's really light, doesn't scare the fish, and any fish from like six inches to even two or three pounds is absolutely enormous fun on a light little rod. So get the right gear that's gonna suit where you're gonna be fishing, and you're gonna have a lot more fun. Now when I'd come to a, a river like this, the main thing I, I want to emphasize is you stop. You get here, you stop and have a look at it and imagine where that fish is going to be. Here I would see where the water is going to be concentrated and what we'll call a bubble line. And that's essentially where the water uh, funnels together, produces a lot of bubbles on top, which shows us where that concentration of food for the fish is going to be. So he's going to be sitting right next to that fast water. He'll duck out, grab what food's there and duck back into the, the safety of his little home. I'll generally cast and work my way up a river. You don't want to do the biggest cast first off, otherwise your fly line's going to generally scare the fish. So we do a shorter cast and increase it as we go along. Now I've got a Royal Rubber Leg Stimulator, which is a fly that I use a lot in a lot of areas actually. But if you could imagine where it gets a little bit deeper, just on the, uh, the edge of this bank, there's a lot of uh, grass and tussocks. So if that was a grasshopper, he, and he, he could quite easily just jump off there, fall in, and that's where the fish would sit to eat something like that. This will also look like a little caddis, you know, where it's got arms and legs flapping about everywhere. So it could look like a lot of different things. And, and trout in particular are like seagulls at McDonald's. If it's a bit of a chip or a bit of hamburger, they're gonna eat it anyway. So the main thing is that they're there and we put this fly in front of them. Oh, little take, little fish there. Oh, a nice little one there. And uh, beautiful little fish, and we're just working our way just up a lovely little bubble line here. And uh, we'll just get him out of this lovely little net. It was only a tiny one, but it'll certainly look after him a little bit better if you can get him in the net. And he's a lovely little brown. Certainly won't win uh, any awards at the fishing club but um, just great fun to walk up a river and it's just a stunning location. Lovely little brown and he loved that uh, rubber leg stimulator. Just get that out. As opposed to the rainbows, lovely little red spots along there. Just a beautiful fish. And we don't want to keep him out of the water too long and he's good to go. But that uh, is fantastic. Just to walk up a lovely little river like this and at times you can get uh, quite a few fish to attack your fly. It's been a little bit hard going later in the year, but who cares? It's a wonderful spot to spend a bit of time and enjoy your day.
Oh, nice little fish there. And it was just looked like a lovely little area right next to that log. And uh, if I was a trout, that's where I'd be sitting too, right next to that log. And all the food would get funneled to you. And he certainly liked it. And it's a little rainbow. I'll get you to have a closer look at him. And you can see the, the different colorations. With a, a rainbow trout, you can see that, that red stripe down the side. Closer to the spawning, it gets a lot more predominant as well. But uh, still a lovely little fish. And as, uh, as far as browns and, and rainbows go, these, I guess, are a little bit less cautious, a bit more aggressive. Um, and great fun to catch as well. And he's only, you know, just a little fish as well, but still just great fun on light gear like this the glide in the two weight. And uh, I can get that fly out without sort of needing to uh, play around with him too much, but just a lovely little, little fish and he's good to go. And he'll just keep growing and somebody else can come and catch him as well. But that's the fly that's doing the damage. It's a, a Royal Rubber Leg Stimulator. It's a fantastic fly, just works in so many different situations and here's the perfect thing where it's uh, right up against that log and you can imagine you know foods are getting swept down there could be a caddis could be a grasshopper could be anything and that rainbow trout thought was pretty cool A great place to fish at Wendery is through the, the rowing lanes um, because it's a lot deeper and particularly after a, like a reasonably hot summer that water is going to be a lot deeper and a lot colder so the fish are going to tend to hang around that as well uh, and I've got a sinking line on here because I want my flies to be literally just scraping over the, the top of the weed beds and that's where they're going to the fish are going to be just cruising along maybe a foot or two off the, the weed beds waiting for a damsel to perhaps look to be coming to the surface to, to hatch and I'll put my flies in front of him. So uh, a sinking line I find does that much better and keeps that fly in the feeding zone for a lot longer. So uh, you have a couple of different lines. You might have a fast sink, an intermediate or even a floater depending on what's going to, uh, be where they're going to be feeding at the time. But have the right gear and you uh, are going to be a lot more successful than just using the one setup in different conditions. That's the, uh, the dun that hatches prolifically here on Lake Wendery. The fish just haven't woken up to them yet. There's, uh, it's only just started later in the season, around April is a great time. And um, the fish haven't woken up to them yet, but they will. Great way to catch a few fish on these lovely uh, dry fly dun patterns. No, it's a fish. Oh, it's a wee one. Oh, it's a little red fin. There you go. So this is uh, another little species that you can get out of Lake Wendereet and throughout many of the, uh, the lakes around, especially around Victoria. A really good eating fish once they get a bit bigger. Lovely uh, stripes on them. Um, they're stunning and they do have little red fins in here but we'll put him back. Very aggressive little fish, but uh, not what we're after. Still counts though, still counts.
always pays if you haven't used your line for a little while. It just sits on that reel. We just need to get the coils out. Just a gentle little stretch like that. Make it sit a lot straighter on the water and a lot easier to cast. Just, uh, I guess, when you're retrieving, vary your retrieve, vary your sink rates, um, and fish all different areas. So you might do short little sharp ones, let it sit for a little while, you can do that, or big long strips, or short little strips that continue the whole way. Just vary things up a little bit. Um, all fish are different, and you'll find one that's gonna work on that particular day. Also, once you get near the boat, don't just rip it out from the end draw it up and that's the beauty of a 10 footer you can draw that fly just under the surface and to a fish it imagines whatever that was following or chasing is just about to get away so it will often lunge at it right at the boat just before it's under the just under the surface there so uh, fish your flies all the way to the boat and you'd be surprised how many fish you pick out at the last minute Good, nice, solid fish. And uh, just, oh, beautiful. And they're in such good nick, these, uh, the browns. There is a, quite a lot of rainbows here as well. I've just got to make sure a lot of these uh, little boys for the rowing circuit are all connected by ropes. And we don't want him to swim either around those ropes or underneath it, because that, uh, takes the fun out of catching fish when uh, they break you off. But a lovely brown, and it's about persistence. And uh, once we, we got onto this, this sinking line, and it started to work, getting those flies where you imagine these fish are gonna be holding, and you keep those flies in the right area, then you're gonna uh, be successful eventually. So uh, once you come up with a plan that's working, stick to it. And uh, this has worked out really well. And just, they're just in great nick. Oh, and they've just got a bit of go. And we've got a pretty heavy tippet. But at the same time, I've got to be mindful. I'll just get him around the other side. Uh, that there's a lot of weed around here. And once they get their head into that, you, uh, it's hard work getting them out. So I'm using nine and a half pound Reverge Grand Max, which is a fluorocarbon and it has that strength to be able to steer them around a little bit better but you just see the depth on that fish as we get him in a little bit closer just a stunning fish in just great condition because uh, there's just literally so much food around here come on mate come on and get him in there and that's beautiful so uh, uh i mean catching fish is not everything it's you know first world problems if you don't but uh it, it just it just such a more enjoyable thing to do to casting, have that, uh, that fly get engulfed by uh, a brown like that just makes it all the more enjoyable. I mean, that's every bit as good as a, a New Zealand brown. Uh, depth, condition, power, fitness, just beautiful, beautiful fish, beautiful. Got a bit of kick in him now, and good to go, perfect. We've uh, had a pretty good day up, up uh, in Lake Wendoree. It's a fantastic fishery, uh, not that far from Melbourne and right in the heart of Ballarat. It fishes a lot better when there's a little bit of cloud cover. So into the winter, it's gonna be really good as well. And um, we should get some really good dun feeders as, as well as we get closer to winter. So it's a, it's a pretty good place to spend a bit of time. Got a good couple of fish here. They're in pretty good nick. You know, and I've had mates that have got them up to like nine, nine and a half pounds. So you do get some real thumpers up here. So if you get the opportunity, duck up to uh, Ballarat and fish Lake Wendoree. I'm sure you're gonna love it. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and I look forward to catching you on the fly.